I'm a minute early. That's okay. How is everybody tonight? Did I spell that right? I'm squinting at the stream. Okay. Welcome to the teach-in for Wednesday evening and we are almost done with August. Soon it will be September and so many of the kids are back in school and the weather is still like middle of the summer terrible so you know that's the way it always goes normally if we lived in a normal world we would be having our state fair right now and i would be very involved with the state fair um, i put yarn in it for judging i volunteer at the textile booth when people come up and ask all sorts of questions like my aunt Edna put a quilt in. Where can I see it? And we tell them and show them where they can see it. So it's always a fun time. Hubby and I both go. We both enjoy the fair. And I miss it this year. It is going on, but it is no spectators, just like all the other sports and everything. They are having the state fair where they are allowing the 4-Hers to show their animals that they've been raising and judging, the, getting the judging and all that sort of thing but there's no fair food and no rides and midway and none of that no concerts which is something that hubby and i always do enjoy trying to catch a concert or two during the fair so it's not a normal fair but it's always at the very hottest time of year and it's always when the kids go back to school i have never quite understand that it's a state fair. It's not just a local thing. These people come from every county in Kentucky uh, to show their animals and turn in all the things they made. And, you know, and it's a big deal. And especially for farming communities. And they're still getting to do it, but I'm sure they're not really having the best time ever. <laughs> We have a lot to talk about today, and it's, uh, I've been killing a little bit of time here, but while I do that, I'm going to start off, first of all, look underneath my picture there. I've put in a little bit of a banner to explain what I'm working on for these teach-ins. Um, we're going to make a four-ply cable yarn. And what I'm using is the Icelandic tog. And I want to talk a little bit about the tog to begin with. So that's this right here. And I'll set this over here for now. And I've purposely left any tablecloth off of here just because this is, it's washed, but it's going to get uh, dirtier. I mean, it's just fuzzy and gets fuzzes everywhere so I just didn't put a tablecloth on there but I think you can see the white pretty good anyway when I processed this Icelandic I talked about it in a stream and I pulled the tog off and the fell from it and this is what's left and the tog is always the um, roughest the it's very much like a guard hair it's the outer coat and then the undercoat is the thal, and that's softer. This outer coat, it's kind of hard to find things to do with it. Now you can combine it, if it's a good enough fleece, with the thal, and spin a nice lofty yarn that would make outer wear. You'd have to have something under it. But all by itself, it's very scratchy. It needs to be a non-wearable clothing item. It needs to be something around the house or whatever. I could not help but think of twine when I looked at these nice long staples like this 
And, you know, I was just, it, it, the fuzziness, it just looked like twine to me. So I thought, I'm going to do an experiment when we had our first Tour de, Flan Tour de Fleece, not Tour de France, the first Tour de Fleece. One of my challenges was to see if I could make, quote unquote, twine of, out of this tog. And I did. I'd made a very small sample, but I found out while I was researching about making twine and all that, technically making rope is completely different than spinning yarn. You need different tools, different setups, and different ways of handling the fiber and the, the singles that you're going to make into a rope. So I was not into any of that and really could not figure out any way to braid the singles that I had made, thinking that maybe just braiding it would work. And it just was not working for in incredibly long lengths, which is the reason the rope making has specific tools. So that didn't work. I went to plan B and plan B was to go back to spinning and my thought was, okay, what looks rope like? Well, a cabled yarn came to my mind and traditionally the cable yarn is made out of four ply. So that's what this is, the history of what happened and how I came about trying it. So the first thing I wanted to show you is how I actually got this tog ready to spin because I'm going to real quickly spin a um, fourth single out of this for the four ply yarn, the cabled yarn. As you can see, I have um, a dog grooming tool and I am trying to straighten the tangles out of this tog. I'm holding on to it pretty tight. If you comb this like some normal locks, what's going to happen is it's actually going to just sort of disintegrate and you're not going to have any straightness to it at all. And as you can see already an awful lot is coming off. Now I am going to use what's coming off. So I'm aiming for the, I am aiming for this straight lock bit and then this fluff I can pretty much spin by holding the fluff in my hand so I'm going to keep anything other than re what's really short and what I have here is approximately half of an ounce of tog and the other singles that I have made were also each half of an ounce. You can see that there's a big old snarl right there. So I just undid that. And I'm, this is not perfection. First of all, uh, I probably should have brought the sample of the yarn I had made before, but you know, I am not going for a perfect yarn. I'm not going for a pretty yarn here. This is all about a process. This is nothing that has to do with pretty. And the second thing is when you make a cabled yarn, you don't have to be using the tog the, that I'm using or do it this way. You can take a very lovely fiber, spin four singles following the directions that I'm going to show you later on here, and you will have a gorgeous four plied cabled yarn. So the the purpose of this teaching to me is two things. One, we're playing with something and that's what I love to do is play with something, right? And experiment. And we're playing with the tog and I'm going to give you the specific way of spinning a cabled yarn. This uh, 
looks extremely long when it was all you know pulled off of the thel pulled off of it and everything and and the truth is it just disintegrates into smaller um uh, fuzzinesses <laughs> there is not as well defined locks as it looks not like some of the fleeces that I have worked with that were just so lovely and defined locks, you know. They don't want to hold together at all, really, here. And you'll notice that I am pulling a lot. I'm putting a lot in the trash. I am not trying to save this fleece in any way. It's all for me to play with. And I'm not worried about what's going in the trash but what's going in the trash is a little bit of short stuff that comes off of there like this right here everything's kind of blended in together but that's the short stuff that's coming off my trash can's too full And I'm not trying to be real fussy about it either. But you can see it's all really pretty snarly. I did not do the wash these like locks bit. I threw them in a sink and washed them. They washed up really nice. So we're almost done here. This had a lot of short stuff in it. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes I can see where I didn't actually get all the fell, but I'm not, it's always really short, so I'm not saving any of it. So. Okay, so we have fluff, we have sort of intact locks there, and I'm going to be using my Roberta. Oh, my bobbins are in here. Oh, I missed a lock. Let me do this real quick. I missed a lock. Oh, well, I don't want that. And when I spin these that I'm combing, it is not like going for top worsted top at all because so much of this will fold back on itself. It'll fuzz out. It is, this is sort of the non-traditional lock spinning. Okay, the first thing I, next thing I got to talk about is what direction do we spin first for the four ply cable. When most of us spin, we are used to spinning with our wheel running clockwise, and that's called Z, and we ply with it going counterclockwise, and that's called S. It has to do with what the 
actual direction of the twist looks like. So the reason we tend to do that traditionally is because when you knit with a yarn, the most people tend to add slight amount more of S twist. So if you end with um, if you end with a um, S, if you start with a Z and you end with an S, I had to get my brain going right here, then as you're knitting, you're not untwisting your yarn. You're just adding a little bit more twist to what is already there. Well, thank you for the follow. Is it Scoops? Scoops 448. Scoops, thank you. Appreciate that you're here. So we're going to ask what happens when you have more than a two ply. So if you traditionally spin Z and ply S, but then you have one more ply to go and you want to do that, you're going to end up Z. And if you're going to knit with it, it's not going to be happy about it. Now that's just kind of picky, but that's the traditional way to think about how you want to spin your yarn. If you totally want to turn it around, that's fine. You only have to remember that you start with one, you ply with another, and you end with what you started with, no matter how you go. Scoops, I'm doing good today. How are you? I'm glad that you're here. We are working with Icelandic, as you can see, and we're going to do a little bit of spinning here. This is my Roberta. It's an electric spinning wheel. Hopefully you can see it here. So if I'm going to make a four ply yarn and I start with S and I ply with Z and I end with S, that's different than we traditionally go when we two ply because a lot of people spin to the right, that's Z, they spin to the left, and so, you know, this is, this is, um, I'm sorry, I'm reading Scoop's thing, you fix phones? <laughs> I'm so happy. This is called spinning, in case you didn't know. I'm making yarn. <laughs> and you happened upon a, a teach-in. So I'm teaching right now. Uh, that's fine. I don't mind questions at all. And uh, we'll just, you just have to kind of listen to a language that you may not recognize. Okay. So we're going to spin S. And that means I'm going to go like I'm plying. I mean, traditionally. I'm going to take the fiber as just a handful. And like I said, I am not going to try and straighten it out much or do anything like that. I'm just going to let it feed out as it will. Let's see if I get my tension right. And like I said, it's going to look messy because it's going a little too fast here. Because we ultimately are making twine. Not a pretty yarn. It has all sorts of little fuzzy bits to it because this particular sheep grew this part of their fleece on the outside of their coat. It protected them from the weather and it's almost like a guard hair. Scoop, since you're the only one here, I'm going to ask you a question. I trying the music for the first time tonight. Can you tell me on the balance between my voice and the music? Is the music too loud? Can you give me a feedback on that, please?
So as you can see, I just keep pulling a fiber out of this little hand, this handful of what was combed, but was on the comb basically. Okay, thank you so much. I thought it would be all right, but no way to know for sure. So I'm almost done with my handful here, and then I will go on and spin the locks. As you can see, I'm not, those of you who are spinners watching this later on, I am not going to get a uh, super thin yarn. I do get thinner with uh, locks than I do with the fluff. It does, it means that if you are spinning a good single out of a good fiber, then you might consider you want to only spin really thin you know, comb locks maybe, or something like that, that is good. But um, for this particular little experiment, we don't need to worry about how thick it is. I just realized I probably should have put something in my go live notification about what I was doing. I'm still working on all the little details of streaming here. Almost done. Just really quickly get this fourth single taken care of. So that everybody watching this eventually will know just how to get a single.
Sometimes this spins so nice and smooth. But not all the time. Okay. We're going to call that the end. So now I have two singles. They are spun S and I'm going to ply them Z, which means I'll end up with a two ply. This one here is a two ply already done. And so it's going to be looking like that when I get that done. So let's do that next. Got my direction changed. I don't have my drive band on. There we go. <clears throat> Let's see how's the camera here. Can we see this? Okay. Get everything going right here. So now this is pulling in the opposite direction. And when these two twist, they form the yarn. This is a two-ply yarn. Yeah, that rattle a little. out here in a minute when it gets more balanced. And I am slightly, slightly, maybe even more than slightly, over twisting. And that's intentional because it has to go through one more ply and it needs to have some of that twist to do the third plying, which will be plying the two two plies into four and then we get our four ply cable yarn <laughs> all of that now when you do this on a big project this is a little project but it say you're going to do this a uh, big project and you're going to make your yarn out of something really nice and make a pair of socks with it or something uh, make sure as you stop each bobbin you label which direction you spun it and make sure you continue to spin all four of your singles one direction ply them the opposite and then do your final ply the same direction you did your first singles and that will give you your cabled yarn
All right, didn't quite come out even, but that's all right. No problem. Okay, last step. Now we have, and you can see, I have it labeled. No, you can't see that. It glares in the light, but it says two ply on there, two ply Z. My little reminder. But now I have two bobbins of two ply, plied Z, and I'm going to ply these together, S, which was the way my single went. Let's see. Use big chunky leader too. Now this I'll probably go a tad slower and uh, kind of keep my eye on the twist. See, even that's too fast. Too much twist. So let me feed that back a little bit. I think I'm hung up here. There we go. As you, it's just it really does work better to go slower when you're at this point. Okay. And I'm going to stop and show you it is still Actually, spinning a little too much twist in there. It got a little faster. Now, one of the disadvantages of using this yarn even though it's an experiment to find a use for a fiber that we don't normally want to spin and knit with one of the problems is the fuzziness means you can't see the structure of the cabled yarn very well and so for demonstration's sake it probably wasn't the best thing to pick but I was wanting to work with that Icelandic tog, so that's why I used it. doesn't want to pull in. I'm messing with pulling, get the, getting it to pull in.
I have a basically the equivalent of a humongous pigtail here. Okay, one of the things that has happened is it will no longer pull in. I believe the bobbin is so heavy loaded, it's refusing to pull in, so we're just going to get another bobbin. Because I ended up with a whole bunch of twist. Okay. That's interesting. I had that same thing happen with my um, Aura, the uh, treadle spinning wheel. Um, I was trying to ply. And I reached a certain point where it just it refused to pull in because the bottom was so full. All right, we'll just do this last little bit here. That's the way it's supposed to go. Now, let me see if I can get this to show you some of the structure of a cable yarn. Nope, that light really glares. First of all, it's kind of round, and it almost looks like chain link. And those four strands are all twisted around each other, and that's a cabled yarn. What will I use this for? Well, anything that is not next to my skin, anything that might need a very sturdy piece of yarn. It could be dyed and be decorative for wrapping packages. I mean, you have to be creative because it is not your normal, consistent, um, normal yarn that you spin in order to knit with. So that's the first part that I had planned for this teach-in. The second part is another type of plying that 
probably more familiar with or have heard of that is called uh, chain plying and it ends up it takes a single and it ends up making a chain of three it is a three ply yarn What I have here is a whole bunch of Shetland, Shetland singles. That's almost hard to say, right? Now, when you do a th three ply, chain ply, you start with a single and you don't put another yarn with it. You're only going to work with that single. And it's visually, you have to think of it as a great big crochet process because you have a loop, you pull a loop through, you pull another loop through, and it, it doesn't correlate exactly like crochet, but that's what a lot of people, it finally clicks for them. I know there are a lot of people who say, I just, I tried and I couldn't get all my um, hands going the right way and everything. So, <laughs> there we go. So we're going to be chain plying these Shetland singles. I have spun all of these with a drop spindle over the years. Um, not, you know, I just have accumulated them because I did not know what to do with these little bits of singles. And they were a lot of times a sample um, that would come that would be maybe a quarter of an ounce of fiber in this little bag. This one happened to be from uh, Hilltop Cloud. A number of these are from Hilltop Cloud. And so, you know, it was very nice to spin, very fun to spin, but not a big enough group of fiber in order to make something with. So I thought, you know, I think I'm going to use all these just to show how to chain ply and just follow colors one after the other. No plan, nothing like that. So that's what we're going to do here. First of all, I gotta make sure I'm going the right direction. I gotta put my drive back drive band back on. Get it loosened up. Because I boy I was begging for pulling with that cabled yarn. Alright. That should be alright. And let's start with this really pretty gray color. Kind of looks blue there, but it really is very gray. Lovely deep gray. So I'm going to tie a loop. I know I had a loop in my leader, but I'm going to tie another one with the single that I want to chain ply. So I have this loop right like that. And I can trim that end off later. Don't have to worry about that. And remember I said it's like a loop pulled through a loop. I gotta make sure I can pull this single without breaking it. So this is a loop. Oh, well you're not gonna see that there. Let me get the camera back 
where it belongs. <laughs> Sorry about that. And let's set this back a little bit so that you see my hands. Yeah. Okay, so I have a loop here of the single. And I am going to grab, go, reach through the loop and grab another loop. I'm going to pinch right where those intersect. And I'm going to turn my wheel on. And it's going to take me a little bit to get going here because... So the next loop comes from all the way back there where this loop started, all the way down here, and goes through the loop and gets pulled out. And see the twist that's resulting all the way down there is making your three ply. So let me get going here. Pull the loop through, spin it, pull. See, I have three, but I'm losing my loop already. Going too fast for me. So let me pull another loop out. I'm working off the camera, sorry. So when I get going, I have my right thumb pulling that loop out, my left hand controlling the Uh, draft zone, the area from my hands up to the orifice. Okay. That's what it looks like when you're actually going good. I don't know if you can see that or not. I wonder if I should have gotten a white... Maybe something white would show it better. So I am pulling out the loop, letting the twist run down, pulling out the loop, letting the twist run down. Maybe when I, I'll do white next after I get this done, because I am almost to the end of that little bit. And maybe white will be more visible. This is a pretty dark, pretty dark. Okay, now I'm at the end of that fiber, so I have a loop. I still, I kept my loop open. I'm going to put my white through it and tie a loop. I'm not, um, let me pull this in a little bit. So I'm in the, okay. So I am making a loop here where I tied it. And then I'm pulling another loop through that. So pull the loop, run the third, the single down there, pull the loop, run the single down there. I think you can see the white a little bit better. Pull the loop.
one of the things I'm doing here is intentionally working closer to the orifice than I usually do, but that's all right. Hopefully you can see it. Yep. Now I got a crinkle there. Not good. To be honest with you, I usually do not three ply on this Roberta. It's a bit too much of a spinning wheel. Uh, pulling it in. I just didn't want to change wheels in the middle of a stream. I was all set up for the Icelandic, so. In fact, I'm not liking what I'm getting here at all. All right, I'm not liking this at all. I need to fix this. That's better. Uh oh. My little thing's caught down below. Stop. Now, what do you do when you lose your loop? Well, you dig around a little bit. You work with the twist a little bit. Untwist. Find my loop. Right there's my loop. Put another loop in it. Lost my rhythm, boy. <laughs> Nope, that's not working either. It's not wanting to come off of here. Oh, I see why. Let's put it down there. So if you think of the fact that you have your fingers in that one loop and what you're doing is pulling out your three ply and letting it travel down until you need to make another loop, you're basically just three plying if you think of it that way. And that can help you, I think, visualize what has to happen. Now, I just took some, a little bit of time here to watch the camera, and I think you're seeing pretty good how that three-ply is happening. Uh-oh. It's when I lose keeping that going, I get too much twist.
Okay, that's the end of the white. So I'm going to have to attach another color. Make a make a loop. And even, I mean, it's as many years as I've done this, and I don't do it all that often, it took me, see, I'm settling into a, a nice rhythm now. It took me a little bit, but it also is, some of it is getting the spinning wheel set up just right for the amount of pull-in, the amount of twist, the speed that it's taking it up, you know, all of that is something that you fiddle with, so... If you're going to be three plying a lot of yarn, you know, make yourself a sample um, and get that setting going pretty good for whatever you're going to be three plying. Hey, hey, Bowman. Missed you earlier. <laughs> I popped into your stream a little bit earlier today, but oh man, it was a busy day today. But we got our kitchen put it pretty much almost back together, so that was the priority today. This is Shetland um, that I had spun with a drop spindle at various and sundry, sundry outings over the years. And uh, I just decided to put all the colors together on a chain ply, three ply. Uh, you took forever to make a single hexy puff. I wasn't expecting that. It never was right you expect. No one expects the Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> no one expects the hexy puff time frame. I know. I am so not ready for this coming tour de fleece. And I had so intended to be ready. But, you know, other plans took precedence. Oh, that's the end of that color. So now I have to make a... Let's use a dark one. Another little loop. My end isn't very well twisted here. Hopefully it'll hold. I have some bulkiness. Okay, that's not going to work. Fancy storage bobbins. Don't you love them? <laughs> I'm 
you know, most of them are from paper towels, but... I only have one spindle spin that I started on the first tour that I never got very far with. We're not, we're just, we're not going out and doing things. I mean, I used to take that kind of stuff to whatever event we were going to or, you know, and, and that kind of stuff because hubby and I like to do that kind of stuff, but just not the year for it. Should have brought a nitty knotty in so I could wind this off and see what it looks like right away, but I didn't think to, and that's in my living room. I've never been able to spin in the car, I, I haven't been able to do anything knitting or anything uh the last three years i'm the driver now because my husband had a stroke so he can't drive but um so now i i i've lost all my knitting time when we traveled i used to knit but i never could spin i think the the new little nano probably would work but I don't have one. I'm not going to get one. Yeah. Bum and Maid says, My spinning slowly but surely taking over my guest room. Indy? Is that a, is that a auto carrot? Indy human room? <laughs> um... I purposely like to knit in the car because we'd go through big cities and and hus husband was hubby was driving and I couldn't tiny human room oh yeah okay I couldn't <laughs> I couldn't stand looking at all the traffic so I kept my head down knitting <laughs> whenever we did that <laughs> yeah I did get a clump here Come on. And twist. Okay. Gray next. Two more colors. This one looks like it might uh, give me a little trouble unwinding here. I love this gray. Pretty color. These are all natural color Shetland, by the way. No dyeing. All natural colors. Um, Trillium, Bowman Maid says she has a Trillium and a mini glider, and I don't, I don't, the Trillium, is that a, 
oh man, I can't think of the, uh, now I'm having a, I can't think of the name of the maker, but uh, I've not heard of the mini glider. Yeah, you're tall. You can, <laughs> you can get a lot of drop to your drop spindles. Okay, we just wrapped around the table leg twice. That just was like impressive. We would do that. Hmm. It's a problem with these bobbins. You can't really put them on a Lazy Kate. Nope, that trillium's not who I'm thinking of. Trindle. I'm thinking of the trindle, because I have a trindle. And uh, it's pretty small. Oh, I need to move my hook. Goodness. So this is going to wrap it up for tonight. After making a four-ply cabled yarn out of Icelandic tog for twine. If you care to catch that, go back to the beginning of the... Watch it on the VOD and go back to the beginning. And three-plying, chain-plying, Henri Shetland singles. <laughs> I do like this gray. Okay. This is got more pull in now. Bullsheep is an engineer. Mom bought a trindle and disliked for multiple reasons, so she designed her own li line of lace spindles. Very good. I'll have to look them up. Sounds good. Trindle spindle spins fine for me. I, I don't have any trouble spinning thin on it and spinning like I want to spin. Probably has to do a lot with what you have put on the arms. Sometimes the more decorative ones are really not as functional. I'm not there. Okay, that's the last of that color. Got wait for this. Started with the dark, I'm going to end with the dark.
The Trillium uses silicon beads for weights and is about six grams with no weight on it. Yeah. Yeah, we used to call it frog hair, but she jokes that she spins sewing thread. I mean, it is sometimes amazing. You can just get so thin. Okay, that was not what I wanted to do. There we go. Caught the wrong end. Come on. There we go. A lot of times I can spin thinner on um, drop spindles than I can on a uh, regular spinning wheel, too. I think it has to do with the fact I use smaller amount of fiber in my fiber supply in my hand when I'm spinning with a drop spindle. Um, you know, you end up with a whole bunch of roving and, and it just, I think you end up getting more in your drafting zone when you're spinning on a wheel that way. Oh, it broke. It broke. Speaking of spinning thin. So this is the yarn of many joins. And a little bit of my hair. Get out of there. Okay. Let's see if this will do it. It says, I'm working on getting it that thin on a wheel. So far, the closest I can do is on my double drive. Yeah. Come on, off of there. Oh, <laughs> yeah, usually it's cat hair. That hair is called spinning with love. <laughs> but that's true because my hair gets in the knitting, too. This is definitely going to be thin, too, even as a three-ply. No idea what I'll do with it, if anything. <coughs> Hubby's probably coming to look for me. I'm running late. <laughs> Aren't you done yet? Uh-oh. Snag. Come on. Come out of there. Got a pigtail. There. Oh, almost. Come on. There we go.
Oh, that had a join. <laughs> Must have had trouble when I was spinning it, too. Going too thin. So the next stream will be Sunday afternoon, 3 o'clock Central Time. We will be already in Tour de Fleece. So that'll be what I'll be working on, something from that. Oh, so close to done. Yep, that's it. That's it. I'm going to leave. I'm not going to finish. I'm going to put this little bit on, but I'm going to wind it off uh, into a ball so that it goes better. So thank you for stopping by, especially those of you who check it out later on on the video on demand. And I hope that this has been educational and some fun. And thank you all. I will see you on Sunday. Until then, happy spinning.